fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hooray! The Missouri River was once the prime route to the far west, and its channel was alive with great steamboats carrying adventurous pioneers deep into a new land. Among riverboat owners, competition for the contracts to carry supplies to army posts and Indian agencies was keen. Two of these owners were on the wharf at St. Joseph. A giant stern wheeler had just docked, and Colonel Murphy of the quartermaster's department came down the gangplank. Shake! Yep, there he is, Sellers. I see him. I've got eyes. Murphy! Hello there. Here we are, Colonel, over here. Hello there. Uh, how are you, Sellers? Yes, sir. Fine. Hello, Fine. Camp Matthews. Howdy. Good to see you. Good to see you, Colonel. What's up? You got news for us about the contract? Yes, he bids for open Friday in St. Louis. That's why I asked you to meet me here. You two men were low. You're not trying to tell us we were both low, are you, Colonel? We didn't submit identical bids, did we? Well, no. As a matter of fact, Sellers, cap was low. <laughs> you were uh, next low. But you've still got as much chance at the contract as cap has. Uh, well, say, I don't get that. Don't it go to the low bidder? Well, it would as a rule, Cap. But this year, conditions are different. The department doesn't feel certain that your boat would be fast enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not fast enough. It uh, looks well, like there may be trouble upriver with the Indians, Cap. <laughs> so as far as our supplies are concerned, the speed may be more important than cars. Now, look here, Colonel. My boat, the General Pike, It couldn't is... beat a mud turtle if it was dragging anchors fore and aft. It's a fact. If it's speed they want, they'd be wise to use my Missouri Queen. Your Missouri Queen? Yes. Sellers, just because you dressed that old scow up fast. Now, all right, all right, gentlemen. We won't quarrel about this. You're not out of this cap. You simply have to prove your speed. I... How? Well, the fairest way seemed to be to load both your boats here at St. Joseph with cargoes for Fort Benton. The first to arrive to get the contract and the loser to be paid for his cargo at going rates. But uh, I see. In other words, what you're fixing up is a race. Uh, well, yes, you're, 
You'd both leave at the same time, of course, so it would be a race, eh? But that's not fair. After I've been low, What's I... the matter, Cap? Are you scared? Of a race with you? Yeah. Not by a darn side. All I mean is... That you're so... afraid you'll lose. To you? Yeah. You've been chawing local weed. I'll beat you any time, anywhere, any day of the week. Then it's agreed, gentlemen. You will make a race of it. Well, I'm not saying it's fair, Colonel, but it's all right by me. And by me. So... What do you say we make a real race of it, Cap? Huh? A little bet to make it interesting. Are you game for it? <clears throat> How interesting? A real bet, Cap. Boat against boat. My Missouri queen against your General Pike. Winner to get the loser's boat and the contract. Hey, now. Well, isn't that a little steep, seller? I or... meant it to be. Either this old loudmouth puts up or shuts up. I've been waiting for this chance a good long time. Well... Which is it going to be, Cap? Well, I was... Uh, you see... I don't know. <laughs> Seems to me... <laughs> All right, then, <laughs> sellers, it's a bet. I sure ain't afraid of you. Well, thank you, Cap. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> now, what's so funny? You are. You're a fool. Fool? Look me up after the race, Cap. Maybe I'll give you a job. You did. News of the race and wager spread throughout the territory like wildfire and presently came to the ears of a masked man and an Indian, the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Come on, Tonto. We have to ride. Easy, big fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. We're going to St. Joseph. Sellers is a crook. He can't be allowed to get that contract. Come on, Sellers! Get him up, Scout! The Lone Ranger and Tonto drove their great stallions across country at top speed. And one evening, less than a week later... Colonel Murphy? What? A mash man? Uh... I've got to talk to you, Colonel. Who are you? What do you want? What does that mash mean? I have uh, come to ask you to call off the steamboat race between Cap Matthews and Jared Sellers. And to give you the reasons. By what right do you come here like this? A mash man? Sellers is crooked. You're looking for a fast boat to deliver your supplies... Because of unrest upriver among the Indians. But Sellers is the reason for that unrest. Eh? He's been smuggling guns to those Indians. I don't believe you. I think you lied. You're at liberty to think so. But I'm telling you the truth. Where's your evidence? At the moment, I have none. I have an Indian friend named Tonto. Another Indian, an acquaintance of his, had promised us evidence. We went to meet him and found him dead. Murdered. You expect me to accept all this on the say-so of a mass man? If Sellers wins that race, you'll be in trouble, Colonel. Oh. Because of that contract, you'll have army protection to continue his smuggling. <laughs> Nonsense. Better accept my word than be sorry, Colonel. Mr. M. Well? You go back to Cap Matthews and tell him his little scheme didn't work. What's more, tell him that if I could prove he'd sent you... I'd stop this race and give Sellers the contract right now. I've never met Cap Matthews. I've heard of him. I know he has a fine reputation, but I've never even seen him. Another one of your lies. Tell me something, Colonel. When the boats reach Fort Benton, will you be there? I'm leaving for the fort in the morning. I have to be there when the boats arrive. I've heard that the race won't start for uh, four or five days. Is that correct? It is. What about it? Then we'll see each other in Fort Benton. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> now wait. Come back here. Colonel, we have nothing further to discuss. Yes, but I want you to... No good, Toto. You can hardly blame him, but he wouldn't listen. Uh, what we do now? The only thing we can do, call on Cap Matthews. Easy, big fellow. He's got easy fun. One silver and I'm up, Scout. The masked man's call surprised old Cap Matthews as much as it had Colonel Murphy. But Cap proved more willing to listen, for the masked man's suspicions agreed with his own. Their conversation lasted for well over an hour, and then... There's one other thing, Cap Matthews. Mm -hmm. What's that? This bet Sellers made, his boat against yours. I can't imagine him making such a bet, unless he were certain he'd win. Well, he needn't be. I'm shipping as one of the pilots on the General Pike myself. Oh? I don't mind telling you. What maybe a boat may lack in speed, a, a good pilot can more make up with savvy. Yes, I don't doubt it. That isn't the point. I wonder if Sellers won't make certain you can't win. Huh? 
Well, what do you mean by that? I know what I'd do if I were he. Is uh, this a chart of the river? Uh, yeah. uh, sure it is. What about it? What is this way up here? Oh, th that's the Fort Benton cutoff. Yeah, I thought so. Is it open? Uh, no. Sometimes it is, sometimes it ain't. Oh. We won't know till we get close to it. Then we'll find out by speaking to one of the boats that's just come through. But if it is open, we'll save at least 30 miles over the regular channel, won't it? Sure it will. And the first boat into it? Is bound to win. Oh. It comes out just below the fort, and it's too narrow to pass him. Uh, what have you got in mind? I think that if Sellers has anything in mind, he'll time it to happen just before you reach the cutoff. Yeah? Why? Because he's smart enough to win honestly, if he can. But if he can't, that's his last chance to stop you. Mm. Toto. Uh. Toto, look. You see this place on the river just below the cutoff? Uh, you see it? Could you take the horses and reach it before the boats get there? Uh, me get there. Good enough. Better start now. And when you get there, make camp and wait. Uh, and then what we do? Just stand by. Everything may go all right. But on the other hand, I may need help. Ten minutes later, Toto was on his way out of St. Joseph with silver in tow, according to the Lone Ranger's instructions. And four days later, a great crowd had assembled on the wharves at St. Joseph, waiting for the race to start. Presently, the signal gun sounded, and the two boats were off. Jared Sellers' boat, the Missouri Queen, was a newer and faster boat than Cap's General Pike, and immediately went into the lead. For a while, it looked as though the Missouri Queen might make a runaway of the affair. But soon, the skill of Cap and his partner, Abel Green, began to tell and the General Pike crept up on its rival, then came abreast. It was neck and neck for two days and nights. Presently, Cap Matthews pulled into the lead and held it until the night that his General Pike was due to enter the Fort Benton cutoff. Abel Green was on duty when a man called Dirk came into the pilot house. Hello, Abel. Yeah, what? Oh, Dirk, what are you doing here? I thought Sellers told you to stay away from me. Until it was time to act, Abel. And now it's time. What if someone saw you come in Nobody here? did. I made sure of that. We're due to enter the cutoff, aren't we? Yeah, pretty soon now. Is it open? Well, the river bell went through it going down river. It ought to be. Where's the Missouri Queen? A couple hours back of us. All right, that settles it. This tub goes on a sandbar, Abel. Now, listen, Turk. That's what you've been paid for, isn't it? Don't try to back out. No, I'm not trying to back then out, quit Dirk. looking like you'd like to. Where's the best place to do it? Where well, we're coming to a bad place now. I'll just have to make it look like an accident. See that you do. I'm getting out of here. You don't want me back. Do like you're told. You don't have to worry, Dirk. I know I don't. I'm leaving that to you. I wish I'd never listened to Sellers. Wish I didn't have to do this. And don't, Abel. A, a masked man, an outlaw. Who are you? I came in right behind your friend. Heard everything that was said. See, I've been hidden on this boat since the race began. You'd better stick to the channel, Abel. Well, I, watch out behind you. Oh, oh. Oh, Dirk, you can't get, get away. Get back or I'll shoot yeah, you. But Dirk... Get back to that wheel. I heard you tell that masked man to look out for me. Dirk, you slugged him with your gun barrel. I meant to. Now get this, you double-crosser. You do what we planned and run this tub onto a sandbar. And this is your last chance, Savvy. Uh, don't, don't shoot, Dirk. I wasn't going to cross you. What you were going to do doesn't count. I know what you will do. Get busy. Uh. Hey, we're headed toward Dead Man's Bar. Good. Better get set, Dirk. Brace yourself, we're going to hit. The sooner, the better. No, wait. Now. <laughs> Listen to him holler, Abel. <laughs> this has been a good night's work. <laughs> now let's see what Cap's going to do. He's beat, and I reckon now he knows it. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger was knocked out, and old Cap Matthews' boat, the General Pike, sat helpless on a sandbar. The noise of the crash as the boat went aground awakened old Cap. He dressed hastily and sketchily and hurried to the pilot house. Abel, what happened? How do we happen to go aground? What? The mask man. Say, he's been knocked out. I'm sorry we went aground, Cap. But if that mask man had been slugged a little sooner, it wouldn't have happened. What? I slugged him, Mr. Matthews. What'd you do it for? Well, well I, I tried thought... to explain, Cap. The mask man must have been hired by Sellers to wreck us. It was his fault we went aground. I don't believe but it. But I tell you, I that... brought that mask fellow aboard and hit him here just to keep this from happening. See, I know who that fellow is. It's all right, Cap. What? Hey, no. Oh, you're alive. I was afraid they'd killed you. My hat took some of the force out of the blow. No, don't move, Dirk. I've got you covered. Why, Take you... it easy. I'll tend to you and Abel in a moment. Cap, listen to me. Can you get this boat off the sandbar and keep on going? I can get it off all right, but what good will that do me? How long will it take you? No, it all depends. A couple hours at the best, but you know, half the night at the worst. Why? You're sure you can continue if you do get off, that your boat won't sink? Shouldn't. River boats are made for this sort of thing. Why, they'll go aground half a dozen times a season. Good. Then get off as fast as you can and keep on going. But it'll be too late. By that time, the Missouri Queen will be ahead of me. Once she's in the cutoff... Leave that to me. All I ask is that you don't give up. Abel Dirk, outside that door. Get going. Hey, well, what are you going to do? Take these fellows with me. What? You ain't going to try to get ashore, are you? That's just what I'm going to do. We'll swim. All right, you two. We're going. And you can lead the way. Passengers and crew were startled to see the masked man guide his two prisoners from the pilot house to the main deck, but no one dared to interfere. They climbed the rail and dropped into the swirling waters of the Missouri without being halted. Minutes later, the three men waded ashore and were silently joined by Toto. Toto, you made it. Uh -huh. He may camp over that way, wait two days, got horses. Silver's all right. Uh -huh. He'd be plenty glad to see you. I'd be glad to see him. I suppose the wreck brought you down here. Mm, that's right. Well, I brought you two prisoners. I'll have to leave you again. But I want you to guard them till I get back. Me guard them. And what you do? I'm going aboard Sellers, Missouri Queen. It'll be along in an hour or so. When it gets here, I'll swim out to it. So, uh, in the meantime, I want to speak to you privately. The Lone Ranger drew Tonto aside and gave instructions that the prisoners couldn't hear. It was some time later when the lights of the Missouri Queen appeared. Then the masked man re-entered the river. Jared Sellers was in the Missouri Queen's pilot house peering ahead with interest. Uh, looks like Dirk and Abel did their jobs all right, Tom. <laughs> There's a General Pike ahead of us. I noticed that, Mr. Sellers. She's sitting on a sandbar. High and dry. <laughs> and likely to stay there a while. Well, we're in, Tom. How soon do we enter the cutoff? Oh, I'd say in about another half hour. Ah, uh, then Fort Benton and the contract. And after that, a nice, profitable business with the Indians. With no one to suspect us. Very neat. You haven't won yet, what? Sellers. Mask, mask man. As a matter of fact, you're not wise. You're liable to lose. What do you want? What's that mask for? Where'd you come from? I swam out from shore. And I wouldn't reach for those guns if I were you, Sellers. That wouldn't be wise. You still haven't told me what you're doing here. I've come here to tell you how to win. We have one. Look out there at the General Pike. We're already passing her. She won't be there long. If you make the wrong choice, you can still lose. Just what are you getting at? When you get there, take the cutoff. If you take the long way around, the General Pike can still get in ahead of you. We intended to take the cutoff. What are you talking about? Oh, I thought perhaps you didn't know it was open. It often isn't. But as long as you do know it's open, you won't need me. I'll be leaving now. now hey, wait a minute. I don't get the idea oh, wait, of this. Wait, you... Someone's coming. But what's Maybe that... Maybe someone who saw me come aboard wonders why. Step back and get out of sight. There is somebody coming, Mr. Sellers. There he is now. Dirk! It's Dirk! 
Listen, boys. I swam out here to warn you. A masked man. Me, right. Dirk? Well, you, you got here. Right. And now I'm leaving. But before I go, I want to tell you something. What's that? Whatever Dirk may say, go through the cutoff. First time I told you, it was a friendly tip. Now it's an order. Go through the cutoff. Or take the consequences. You tell... That's all. It's a bay, and I'll see that you regret it. I don't get this. What's going on here? First that masked man comes out here to tell me to do something that I plan to do anyway. Listen, and you come listen, to... boss. It's some kind of a trick. Yeah? Well, what makes you think so? I know it is. That masked hombre is a friend of Cap Matthews. They're working together. I saw him aboard the General Pike. Uh, then what's that? He tried to stop us from wrecking it. Afterwards, he took us ashore and left us with an Indian friend of his to keep prisoners. Only I saw a chance to get away, and I took it. Wait a second, wait a second. Let me get this straight. You mean that if that masked fella told us to take the cut off, it was to help Cap? Sure it was. Ah, and he knows something. Maybe the cutoff's too shallow. Maybe there's been a cave-in that can't be navigated. One of those things, boss. And he probably heard about it from the redskin. Likely it's something that's happened to the cutoff since the river bell went through. What do you think, Tom? I... Uh... I don't know what to think, Mr. Sellers, but whatever you decide, you'll have to do it pretty soon. We're almost there. Uh, well, sir, I think we'd better avoid the cutoff. But, but you heard what that masked man said, Mr. Sellers. He said if you didn't take it, he'd see that you regretted it. Yeah, that's right. He did say that, didn't he, Tom? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, if he thinks we're afraid of him, he's mistaken. Tom? Yes, sir? Go the long way around. Stick to the river. Aye, aye, sir. When the Lone Ranger left the pilot house of the Missouri Queen, he ran to the deck rail, climbed over and dived into the muddy waters of the Missouri River and swam to shore. A short time later, he joined Tonto at their camp. You did everything just right, Tonto, and I think it worked. Mm, that's good. You still got Abel Green? Uh-huh. Him not get way. You brought the horses good. Here, Silver. Here, boy. Here, Scout. Here, fella. Where we go? We're off to Fort Benton, Tonto. As fast as we can get there. Easy, big fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Get him up, Silver. Oh. Silver. While the Lone Ranger and Tonto sped overland toward Fort Benton, the Missouri Queen raced toward the same goal by way of the river. It was almost dawn before she came within sight of her destination. And yet, although it was still dark, the small settlement at the head of the Missouri was lit up with bonfires as if for a celebration. And in the Missouri Queen's pilot house... <laughs> Look there, Tom. That's Fort Benton. Almost there, Mr. Sellers. <laughs> Looks like they're all lit up to celebrate oh, something. Sure, of course. They've had word that we're coming. They're ready to meet us. <laughs> Full speed ahead, Tom. Now we collect that contract and old Cap's boat. The Missouri Queen continued on her way, its owner pleasantly anticipating his coming triumph. They drew closer. Presently, they drew alongside a wharf. And when the gangplank had been run out, Sellers was the first one ashore. <laughs> Come on, Dirk, the town will be ours tonight. I wonder where Colonel Murphy is. Said he'd be here to meet us. You see him anywhere, Dirk? Well, oh, there he is, over there. Right, right. Murphy! Colonel Murphy! <laughs> How do you like it, Colonel? Told you I'd be the first one in, didn't I? Yes, sir. Looks like the crowd's gone wild. You know, I never had any idea I was so well-liked up here. <laughs> Well, Colonel, how about it? Got that contract handy, hmm? Like my signature on it, wouldn't you? I don't need it, Sellers. I already have a signature. Caps. Well, oh, but that's impossible. He isn't here yet. Your mistake, Sellers. You should use your eyes to better advantage. If you look beyond that warehouse over there, I think you'll see the Cap is here. But, boss, it's the General Pike. But what? How? And here's its owner, Sellers. The F.B. Cap Matthews. And come to think of it... I'm here now, the owner of the Missouri Queen, too, according to the terms of our bet. Ah, 
<laughs> I hope you didn't scratch it not on the way up here, friend. Oh, just a moment. Something's wrong here. There is, sillies. And if you ask me, you're it. But how did Cap get here first? The masked man said It was the masked man that beat you, sellers. If it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't have won. Then he did trick us. Why, that He dirty... didn't trick you none, except by telling the truth, sellers. Only he knew you was a dog gone used to lying to get your own way. You'd figure everybody else was doing the same. So when he told you to take the cut off, he was telling you right. Yes, <laughs> and you figured wrong. Well, when I get my hands on that mask, I don't now. think you'd want to, Sellers, nor could if you would. It's my great pleasure to inform you that you're under arrest. What? Under arrest? What for? For trying to wreck me. The masked man brought Abel Green in with him. The Green's confessed. And he's a liar. That may be. You'll have to prove it in court. Oh, now, 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 you're not serious about this, are you, Colonel? I was never so serious about anything in my life, Sellers. And I have an idea that before we're finished with you, we'll have some graver charges to make. Hey, boss. Well, who the dickens is that masked fella? How do I know? <laughs> then I'll tell you, Sellers. <laughs> He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Mm -hmm.